uh, talk today about the bronchitis management and uh, diagnosis in non-CF patients. It's not sharing. It's not sharing yet. Okay. Uh, Okay. So the point we are talking about today, we're going to talk about the pathophysiology, causes, clinical feature, evaluation, imaging, pulmonary function, diagnosis, and the treatment for maintenance of the health. And we're going to talk also regarding the acute exacerbation. Uh, introduction in general, the bronchitis it's a syndrome of a chronic cough with a daily viscous speech and production associated with eye airway dilatation and bronchial wall thickening. So we have permanent damage in the airway. Estimated around half million adults have bronchitis in the USA and the prevalence usually increase eight to tenfold after the age of 60 and it's more common in women than men. Pathophysiology is a viscous cycle. It's usually started with infection, permanent damage on one of the airway. So if we take a look on one side of this image here, uh, let's say uh, we start with a, a microbial colonization, or even it's before that, viscous of the lung secretion. There's a mucus plug, there's secretion. It's a, a good field for a bacteria to grow in. So it would be a colonization, usually mainly are uh, pseudomonas and that means it's inflammation inflammation yeah keep yeah that means inflammation and all these cells come to the part of the airway and that lead to release all the destruction inflammatory marker tears protease all this stuff that can lead to destruction of the airway and the build up of more secretion permanent damage increase more colonization of more bacteria and uh, this is the cycle which will continue with all these infection and colonization of bacteria. Other contributor factor with pathophysiology is the atopy, like asthma and different other diseases, also COPD, vitamin D deficiency, on the immunodeficiency in general, common variable immunodeficiencies. Type of uh, bronchitis, we will talk about it, but this is about the shape of how it is going to be. It could be a cylindric part, and there is a part of the varicose or the cystic, as we see in the imaging here. Etology, it's broad, but main things we have always to think about it. If it is diffuse all the lung or localized to one part of the lung, if we thinking about localization, we can think more about foreign body, previous injury, tumors, that mainly if we sing as a diffusion of the lung, we will think about another systemic disease or other disease that affecting all the lung, like cigarette, a smoking, a COPD, asthma, allergic bronchial, pulmonary aspergillus is more with the localized, usually. Any pulmonary infection can lead to do that. Uh, alpha-1 transcend deficiency. Some other syndromes uh, like tracheobronchomalacia and the tracheobronchomegaly uh, can lead to do cystic fibrosis for sure and Young syndrome. Clinical feature, how the patient can present to the clinic. They mainly have the chronic cough with around 98% of the patient, daily speech and production, shortness of breath, Hemoptysis, usually hemoptysis could be very severe uh, when it comes with those patients uh, because it's mainly affecting the facial or the mucosal arteriole of the bronchial and recurrent porosity. Uh, physical finding, uh, crackles, wheezing is common, especially if it's uh, combined with a COPD or asthma, and digital clopping in a few patients, like two persons only. Uh, labs for a cup, if you find a patient with bronchitis came to the um, clinic, so you have to figure out what's going on, if there's anything you can at least fix, or if something is unfixable. So you do the, you start with a CBC with differential looking out for the infection, 
you do the immunology workup, uh, immunoglobin, IgG, IgM, IgA. You test for cystic fibrosis, and you do culture for the sputum, mycobacteria, uh, all bacteria and fungi, IgG subclasses, alpha-1 and trypsin, and rheumatoid factor. And you do cell count of induced sputum, looking for eosinophilia. Also, like atopy, which sometimes can lead to bronchitis. Diagnosis, this is a just simple chest X-ray. If we seeing the first picture on the left, is showing part of this, the bronchitis and the dilated airway. And the other one, it's not good on the screen, but if you can look at here. So those are the bronchial, how it's dilated. Okay, sir? Okay. And the CT scan, the, the main feature on the CT scan we're looking about is the airway dilatation. The airway lumen, lumen it would be above 1.5 times of the adjacent blood vessels. And we see it as a signet ring sign as uh, the blood vessels will be at the pulp over the, the ring and uh, the bronchial will be the ring itself. Uh, lack of tapering uh, of the airway, airway visibility within one centimeter in the periphery and the costal pleural surface. Airway affected by bronchitis may contain mucoprenic plug, so you can see it in the CT scan if there's like a mucus inside the bronchial wall. And sometimes you can see some cyst coming out of the bronchial wall if there's like severe destruction of bronchitis. There is some imaging. Uh, first one, this is a William Campbell syndrome. And we see the loose of the airway tapering. Uh, the second one, we see three in bud in A and B, which is multiple uh, dilated bronchioles. The last one is high resolution CT scan, which is showing also some mucus inside the bronchial wall. And also, there's some imaging. The first one showing some traction bronchitis. Uh, the other one is more central bronchitis. Last one on the right uh, showing maybe in the left lower lobe dilated and thickening in the airway. And the arrow is showing with the cyst going out from the bronchial uh, uh, lumen. Uh, diagnosis, as we say, the distribution can play a part to understand what's going on and give some differential. If we look at this more central distribution, sometimes it's more suggestive of allergic pulmonary aspergillosis. losses. If it's more upper lobe dominant, it's more of a cystic fibrosis or one of those variant. Middle lower lobe, it's primary ciliar dysfunctions. And the middle lobe and lingula, sometimes it's with an infection, non tuberculous mycobacteria. And the lower lobe involvement, usually it could be idiopathic bronchitis. Uh, severity, usually with the evaluation, as we said, after the blood workup imaging, the PFT can showing, mainly uh, showing obstruction and declining FEV1, FVC, and also it depends what's the coexistent uh, other lung disease, if it's COPD or uh, it could be rheumatoid factor or CF, so it depends what's going on exactly. But mainly it's the obstruction, mainly uh, type which is going on. Uh, if it's the COPD coexist with uh, bronchitis on the CT scan, that make it it's more severity uh, with the COPD exacerbation if it's happened later on. Uh, those are there's two index we use to. Um, measure the severity of the bronchitis. The first one, BSI, is bronchitis severity index, and the other one is FACE score. The BSI is more in details. It's contained the age, BMI, FEV1, and uh, recurrent of the admission, exacerbation, uh, MRC, dyspnea score, and uh, looking for pseudomonas colonization or any bacterial colonization. Uh, it depends on the mild, moderate severity, and it can give us the how it's on one year outcome mortality or four year mortalities. Uh, the other score is faced. It's um, 
it's part of the BSI's core, but it's uh, more focusing in five stuff, FEV1, age, chronic colonization, extension, and dyspnea. And this only give mild, moderate, severe without clear details about numbers of the outcome of the mortalities or hospitalization rates. Uh, again, in lung function test, as we said, uh, it's mainly obstruction impairment. Uh, acute exacerbation in definition, uh, exacerbation of bronchitis is defined as deterioration in three or more of the following in at least 48 hours. So it's worsening cough, sputum volume, sputum, the purulency, and uh, shortness of breath or exercise intolerance, fatigue, or hemoptysis. So we can consider this patient is in exacerbation. And we can say now more about the risk factor to getting an um, exacerbation. Uh, chronic bacterial infection, especially pseudomonas, uh, the respiratory viral infection, and air pollutant and cigarette smoking. Uh, evaluation, usually, it's focused mainly on the what organism is lead to this exacerbation. As it's different a little bit from the COPD here in bronchitis, it's mainly we thinking about the infection. So usually it's start to cause by infection and the flare up it's mainly with infection because we already know this patient had bacterial colonizations. Uh, treatment, usually the treatment is mainly antibiotic usually with every uh, exacerbation, either also antiviral if we know exactly there is a viral flare up is the cause. Uh, antibiotic, uh, we can use if it's uh, mild, we can start with oral, is the patient effibrile, clinically stable. And if we have some data before about this patient and the uh, type of the organism he developed. So if there is no data at all, so usually they recommend starting chloroquinone as pseudomonas is a common to be colonized with people with the bronchitis. Uh, if patient is stable, we can start with only fluoroquinone, but if patient is getting more sick, or he's in distress, uh, he needs to be on IV antibiotic. And if we know exactly if he has MDRS, like multidrug resistance pseudomonas, we are on broad spectrum. If we know exactly what kind of the bacteria is going, it's since the formoxicillin or macrolide that can be started. Uh, if beta lactam is positive, so it's going to be augmenting. And it's usually on the sensitivity. And the recommendation treatment is 10 to 14 days for the mild symptoms or if applied to a stable patient. Intravenous treatment, first of all, any failure and improvement after oral antibiotic. If the patient organism he developed, he require IV antibiotic. The other things, if he's on distress, coming to the hospital, need admission, ICU admission, hypoxemia, febrile, that's require IV antibiotic. Uh, if it's resistant pseudomonas, uh, usually, as I said, nanoquilinol, this will be the type of antibiotic we choose. Uh, the resistant will be high on liquinolone. Uh, some people can develop staph like 18 percent of those patients. So van that should be on the regimen to start with if we don't know exactly what antibiotic is, uh, what uh, bacteria is growing so far. Uh, if we don't have any culture at all, as we said, broad, uh, we should cover the gram negative and gram positive organism. Uh, duration at least 14 days. And usually airway clearance measurement should be used. Antiviral therapy, uh, which as bronchitis could be triggered by influenza, so oslintivivir or balaxivir, that can be used, especially if the symptom is in the first 72 hours. Uh, Non-tuberculous bacteria like microbial avium, it could be the cause also. I'm not going to go with the treatment, but it's a prolonged treatment with the macrobacteria avium. It's not like a short treatment, 14 days, as we said. Even also aspergillus as ABPA, it could be the cause. Also, different treatment will be with a prolonged one. Outcome after exacerbation, uh, symptoms usually get prolonged up to 16 days sometimes. 16% of the patient will never back to their normal. Uh, in a short time, they take more time. Patient with a three or more exacerbation per year have a twice the mortality rate as the other people who don't experience any exacerbations. 
Uh, hemoptysis, as we talk about, it's common about 27% of the patients he get hemoptysis. Hemoptysis is usually arterial in origin as it's mainly from the superficial mucosa of the bronchial. It can, you need embolization and sometimes it needs resection surgery of the affected part. Uh, advanced disease, uh, they may require resection part of the lung, the bronchitic lung. Uh, major indication usually uh, is if it's partially obstructed lung from the foreign body or a tumor. Uh, this procedure also can be done if we have very frequent exacerbation. Uh, when I read about the, like more than two or three per year and it's getting severe exacerbation, so we can consider if it's only one part of the lung had the bronchitis, so that part can be removed. Uh, other things to be uncontrolled hemorrhage, if we have hemoptysis, and remove any part of any um, difficult treatment organism like uh, non tuberous bacteria, and also reduction in the overwhelming purine of viscid sputum production. The last one, it will be the lung transplantation with the median survival time for transplant with bronchitis was eight years from what I read about. Now, I'm going to talk just uh, briefly about the maintaining lung health with people with the bronchitis. So a couple of stuff we have to focus to avoid of any lung irritant like smoking cessation or vaping, airway clearance therapy. Uh, we talk about the bronchial hygiene, improved cough, the, and exercise, chest physiotherapy, flutter valve, aquapilla, and high frequency chest wall oscillation, uh, either the vest or with mechanical oscillators. Uh, mucolytic agents can be used, uh, nebulizer with hypertonic saline, uh, some inhaled mannitol. I tried to read about it. It's not really approved in the United States, but outside in Europe they use it. It's the main situation as we talk about the hypertonic saline, it's hypertonic solution. It try to decrease the viscosity of the uh, mucus and make it easier to clear the mucus. The mucolytic agent, uh, it was uh, acetylic mucomest or uh, Dornes alpha also has been used. Dornes alpha has been studied more in the CF patient, more than just you know, bronchitis. Systemic hydration, the usual thing in case of uh, exacerbation, patient admission to the hospital, you could use IV fluid, but not the, the thing as you, you want to overhydrate the patient, just make sure he's aerobic, not dehydrated. Uh, pulmonary rehab, it can be used for patients, outpatient. Infection control part, I like it. Even when we go to the CF clinic here, so wearing a gowns and uh, gloves when you ever see a patient between CF patient, because there is a cross infection can happen between patients just to minimize that colonization. Uh, it's part of it, but also more study on the cystic fibrosis patient and who are yeah, younger in age also. Uh, underlying disease or comorbidities, as we said, any primary immunodeficiency, allergic pulmonary aspergillosis, uh, sinus disease, and non tuberous mycobacteria. Uh, antibiotic for prevention, microloid, it can be used. It can be used as it is in the COPD people. Either you can do 25 daily or 503 times a week. Before starting that, you make sure uh, patients they don't have colonizing pseudomonas, and also make sure this patient don't don't have uh, mycobacteria colonization because if you start the treatment for them, that you're gonna increase the resistance for the mycobacteria. Adverse effect, as we said, in general, hepatotoxicity decrease here and GI symptoms. Non macroloid antibiotic was also studies doxycycline and amoxicillin, but unfortunately, there is no clinical trial or, or retrospective uh, trials. Uh, inhaled antibiotic, inhaled topramycin, azitronam, and colistin and gentamicin has been used, uh, which I saw topramycin is one of the commonest ones being used uh, to reduce pseudomonas uh, colonization in 28 or 
days on, 20 days off. Uh, Azitronam also being off label for non cystic fibrosis uh, patient. Uh, there's multiple trials. Uh, impaired trial include about 540 patients. Did not result in a clinical significant improvement in uh, respiratory quality of life after four weeks of using the antibiotic. Colostin, it can be used in phase three trial with a promise trial. Uh, reported reduced exacerbation, prolonged time to first exacerbation after using colostin. Gentamicin, there is no difference. We're seeing a 24 hour sputum volume or an aspirometer parameter after the day uh, following those patients. Uh, eradication treatment, uh, there's uh, two studies uh, was done for eradication treatment with a pseudomonas patient. One of them was clinical trial with 35 uh, patients. The eradication group had fewer exacerbation, less hospital exhibition, and hospital days during uh, follow-up. Uh, some retrospective study was done on 30 patients also for them. Uh, it was had reduction in exacerbation frequency uh, following eradication. Uh, that's mainly the other things we can use at other medical uh, therapy, bronchodilator. Also, I was focusing to see if everyone bronchitis you have to do uh, as we treat COPD. It's not usually unless there is COPD or asthma with those patients, so you don't empirically treat unless the spirometry or PFT is showing reversibility with the bronchodilator, so you know this patient can get benefit from it, otherwise you don't. Anti-inflammatory medication, multiple study was done on statin, uh, steroid, prolonged course. Uh, steroid could help, especially with acute exacerbation, but not really as a chronic treatment. Uh, Jared, uh, the for reflux, uh, it can be used, but it didn't show much in the effect of the exacerbation. Uh, immunization, um, other patient with any lung problem, especially influenza, pneumo vaccine, and nowadays COVID vaccines. Nearly. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Any rule for steroids use? You can use it as an anti-inflammatory, uh, uh, but like if it's a prolonged treatment, I didn't see any studies mention any prolonged treatment. Even some of them, they mention about the inhaled steroid, if it can help, but not really as a maintenance, unless there is a comorbid things like COPD or asthma is going on with that. So even for exacerbation steroid? You can use it as anti-inflammatory, but debatable. Any As I told, there is two study about uh -huh. that. Uh, they mentioned that there is improvement, decrease in the exacerbation with that. Uh, but after eradication treatment, not all the patients already eradicated. Like 54 patient percent in the clinical trial they did has been already er eradicated. But you can give the trial if the sampan you think he's getting more frequent exacerbation. And one of the choices, you can do eradication treatment. And in up to date, they mentioned like how you can do it. So I didn't put it here, but yeah, there's a prolonged course of treatment. It's gonna start with the first like IV, then oral, then you do even inhalation, to promising for them. And how often do you repeat the hospital culture? Uh, for the follow-up? Yeah. To be honest, I didn't see anything because it depends on the code. But with the cystic fibrosis people, I know it's more frequent. At least you do it twice, you know, three times per year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, the bronchix, the, the problem is like it depends on what's how he had the bronchitis. Is it really COPD, asthma? Is it a tumor? Is it immune deficiency? So. Uh, you may treat or work up with the primary treatment as the process is only a syndrome, it comes with the original disease itself. Surgery is better than treatment if you have three, two or three exacerbations. And there is no comparing a study directly, but what I'm, I think is most of the people are gonna be older age. First of all, other comorbidities, other lung problems. 
with the indication with the surgery, you're looking for somebody have, it's not homogeneous, like heterogeneous. There is a specific lobe, it's disease. You can be That's fix it and you go out, which is not usually the case. That can be in the tumor, foreign body, or like specific infection in one lobe, oh, so yeah. that you can treat it to be easier. Yeah, it's usually if it's like if it's recurrent infection, you know it's only like one lobe, one lobe so it's it's infected, or just a specific area, yeah. maybe as a last resort, not something that you may consider yeah. a section. That's how compared to surgery the or just antibiotics for it. It depends. Well, I mean, you do antibiotics, of course, but if it doesn't work, I mean, the only surgery is for recurrent problems. So. But, uh, yeah, I'm talking about recurrent after two or three, and you have localized. If there is localized go problem, to surgery, or should I just keep them on chronic antibiotics? I guess it depends That's, on your patient how stable yeah. they are, but I think it's reasonable to consider surgery. Yeah, these are again localized bronchitis, right? So CF usually have diffuse bronchitis, some other disorders, but some patient may have localized bronchitis as well in one yeah. area. So. Um, and it's usually very severe and bad with significant damage among them. It's localized. Thank you. Sir. Sure. Thank you, guys. Okay. Let me block you out, sorry. It's a small topic. I didn't bother you.